Well, praise the Lord. I, uh, I'm going to be preaching out of the Word of God this morning. Amen. 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 Go figure, right? You know, uh, a lot. You know, sometimes you know we're back at the door, and uh, you know somebody you know will come by and say, "Man, that was a a good sermon or something." I said, "Well, I got good material. What can I say?" You know, I mean, if you preach the stuff, you know, you're okay, right? And uh, that's what God has commissioned me to, and and He uh, uh, called me to preach His Word. And um, this morning, uh, I want to uh, start on uh, going to the cross, because um, between now and uh, Easter Sunday, uh, I'm going to preach a few uh, sermons on the way of the cross, going to the cross, because um, a lot of times we get um, religion mixed up with following Jesus. And uh, the disciples did the same thing, and I do the same thing from time to time. Everybody here has done the same thing from time to time. And uh, let's say our purpose statement together, whatever it takes to know Jesus and to make Jesus known. Now the disciples thought they knew Jesus, right? I mean, the disciples, <coughs> they were following Jesus for three years, and you know, they heard the Sermon on the Mount, and they had heard, uh, you know, they had seen Jesus heal people. He, they had seen Him heal blind eyes. They had seen Him cast out devils. They had, they had, and they had done it themselves, you know. Uh, and uh, it was, a, you know, a good ministry. Uh, you know, Jesus, the, the, uh, the creator of the universe, was down here. And they were privileged to follow Him, right? And His disciples. And Jesus also said... If any man come after me, let him pick up his cross daily and follow me. As Jesus was going to Jerusalem with his disciples, he was telling his disciples again what was going to happen to him. But his disciples were not paying attention to him because they each had their own agenda of self-glory. You see, and uh, they were too busy and they were too upset. Uh, they, they were uh, too. They were. They were too busy being upset with each other to grasp the significance of Jesus' words, right? And so they're going to Jerusalem, and Jesus again is telling them um, about... Now, the first time He told them was when He asked, uh, you know, uh, who do men say over in uh, Matthew chapter 16, who do men say that I the Son of Man am? And Peter said, Thou art the Christ, Son of the living God. And, uh, you know, He said He started telling uh, them, I've got to go up to Jerusalem, I've got to get uh, crucified... And Peter takes him, the one that had just confessed him, Peter takes him aside and says, Oh, this will never, uh, they won't do this to you. And, and uh, then Jesus said, Get thee behind me, Satan, for uh, you're savoring the things of man rather than, rather than the things of God. So that's the first time he told him that he was going to Jerusalem to, uh, to, uh, to die on the cross, uh, to, to get beat up, to get scourged, to get spit on. Uh, and so he's telling them again, Mark chapter, uh, Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10, and I'm going to start in verse 32, and it says, uh, And they were in the way going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus went before them, and, and, uh, and they were amazed, and as they followed him, they were afraid. Stop right there. As they followed him, they were afraid. Now, uh, why were they afraid? Because Jesus said we're going to Jerusalem. And there's a lot of church members that are afraid privately to follow Jesus. Because of what the cost of following Jesus might be. And they don't want to, uh, they don't want to say anything to anybody. And they don't want to say they're afraid. But they are. The disciples of Jesus were afraid as they followed him, and uh, and he took and and he took again, okay, again, the second time, he took again the twelve and began to tell them the things that should happen unto him, and uh, saying, "Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be delivered to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him unto the Gentiles." And they shall mock him, they shall scourge him, they shall spit upon him, and shall kill him, and the third day he shall rise again. Now, 
getting to the cross was a little dicey for the disciples, wasn't it? And, uh, and James and John, the sons of Zebedee, now in Matthew chapter 20, verse 20, we find the mother of Jesus, uh, the mother of James and John, uh, coming to Jesus and requesting, uh, making this request. Okay, so James and John even got mama involved here. Uh, and so uh, now they weren't listening to what Jesus was saying they were um, they were uh, promoting self glory okay now and this is James and John this is two of the closest disciples of Jesus James was the first disciple to be martyred John was the last to die okay they were brothers all right now, and so, uh, uh, and there's, so it says, saying, it, it says, uh, and James, verse 35, and James and John, the son of Zebedee, came unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. <laughs> so they had uh, a prayer request here. <laughs> Lord, I want you to do something for us. You ever, uh, you ever do that in church? Lord, I want you to do something for me. Uh, and he said to them, uh, what would you, uh, what what would you that I should do for you? Now I think Jesus probably already knew, you know this, but uh, he wanted to, he wanted to hear them say it. And they said to him, Grant unto us that we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory. Now they they believed Jesus. They, they believed he was going to be glorified and all that stuff. But Jesus said to them, You know not what you ask. Then he asked him a question. Can you drink the, uh, of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? Now that's, that's a question I'm going to ask every one of us. I'm going to ask myself today. Can I drink the cup that Jesus drank of Remember Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane? He, he prayed to the Father, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. He didn't want to drink the cup. And so, and he asked his disciples, can you drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said to him, we can. Now, I don't think they knew what they were asking right there. Or saying, we can't. And Jesus said unto them, You shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of. <coughs> and with the baptism that I am baptized with all, shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. Now, the Holy Ghost was not yet given. Okay? No. On the day of Pentecost, they were baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen? I mean, John the Baptist said, you know, there's one coming after me whose shoelace I'm not worthy to unlatch. He is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. We need to understand that, that when Jesus, uh, we need the baptism of Jesus. We need to understand that, that uh, when we receive the baptism of Jesus, we get uh, Holy Ghost power uh, for a witness to the world. We need to understand that when we get baptized with the Holy Ghost, uh, we have power uh, on the earth, uh, God's power to tell people about Him. We need to understand that we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We need to understand that we need to be willing to drink the cup. Amen. That he drank. Amen. You see, a lot of people want a sweet by and by, pie in the sky, and all this stuff in their churches. And we have a several, uh, you know, big time uh, preachers, we call them in today's world, that are multimillionaires and they have sold the gospel. We need to understand that the, uh, we need to get down to this question can we drink the cup that Jesus drank of, and can we be baptized with the, his baptism? So he asked his disciples, and and, they, and he said, you shall indeed. It is verse 40. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. There's a prepared place on the right hand and left hand 
of Jesus. And when the ten heard it, now there's the other ten disciples, they began uh, to be much displeased with James and John. Now, this little request here caused the other disciples to get ticked off. It caused division in the disciples because they were mad at James and you know, what do you mean these two sons of thunder going up to Jesus and ask that request? So, you know, a lot of times, you know, we can be sincere in our request for Jesus, but we can be putting down the other, the other members of the body, can't we? And that's what James and John was doing. And that's what James's John mother was doing, too. Uh, you know, unless you just think it's a man thing, it can be a woman thing, too. Now, and when the ten heard it, they began to be much displeased with James and John. But Jesus called them unto him and saith, You know that uh, they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. And that's the way Gentiles think. That's the way the world thinks. The more power you have, we're going to exercise authority over you. United States government or whatever, you know, the governments of the world. We're going to exercise authority over you. Verse 43, but so shall it not be among you, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister, be your servant. Okay? And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be the servant of all. For even the Son of Man, speaking of Jesus himself, for even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. That's why Jesus came. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I pray, Father God, that Lord, if we would answer this question this morning that you ask your disciples, can we follow you? Can we drink the cup? Can we be baptized with your baptism? In Jesus' name, amen. As we each follow Jesus to the cross, let us uh, too examine ourselves to see uh, if our ambitions are right before God or if they are merely our own thoughts of our own Christianity. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we have a, a lot of thoughts and we have a lot of denominations, uh, you know, around the world and, and so forth. Jesus told his disciples the truth, but they were in no condition to understand it. At times, each one of us have had a preconceived idea of how God's kingdom should work in our own lives, right? Now, God, I, you know, I need you to do something for me so your kingdom can work in my life. And we, we, uh, we actually pray a selfish prayer to God. We might even get mom to pray for us. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. And, we, and I'm sure James and John were sincere. They were, they were thinking, you know, they wanted to be close to Jesus. They were thinking, but they were not thinking the, the, the thoughts of Jesus, were they? In the light of the Lord's announcement of his death, we were embarrassed and ashamed to read James and John asking for thrones. How, they, how could they and their mother, that's Matthew 20, 20, and 21, be so callous and selfish. Peter had responded to the first announcement by arguing with Jesus. And after the second announcement, the disciples responded by arguing among themselves over who was the greatest. That's in Mark chapter 9, 30, and 34. They're going up to Jerusalem, and they're arguing. Let me read that, Mark chapter 9, 30, and 30 through 34. Mark chapter 9, I, didn't, I don't think I, I put that in the, the notes, but... Uh, Mark chapter 9, 30. It says, And they departed thence and passed through Galilee, and it would, and, and he would not that any man should know it. <clears throat> For he taught his disciples and said to them, The Son of Man is delivered in the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. He, he announced it again. But they understood not that saying, and were afraid to ask him. Are we afraid to ask Jesus now? Now, Jesus, this cross thing, I really don't want to pray that in my own life. I want to pray of a nice blessing in my life. And they were afraid to ask him. Um, and so um, it says, 
uh, in verse 33, and he came to Capernaum, and being in the house, he asked him, uh, what was it that you uh, disputed among yourselves by the way? But they held their peace, for by the way they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. Now, a lot of times we see that in American Christianity, don't we? Now, who's the greatest? Who's the greatest denomination? Who's the greatest church? These men seem blind to the meaning of the cross, American Christianity. Are we too blind to the meaning of the cross as we strive to be the greatest of Jesus' disciples or we pull for, for position in the church? Jesus was greater than Solomon, but he did not want us to remember his great wisdom. Jesus did not make it about himself. He made it about his Father and how to glorify him. He, uh, here was the creator of the universe, <coughs> but he did not want people to remember how, how great, uh, his great uh, creative ability. Instead, he instituted what we call the Lord's Supper as a remembrance of his death. He also instituted water baptism of a picture and a remembrance of his death, burial, and resurrection. <coughs> In the Christian experience, we are to follow the Lord and remember His death in two ordinances that He left with us. That's the Lord's Supper and water baptism. Over the centuries, man has made shafts of marble and buildings with stained glass and elaborate architecture, all in the name of Christianity. When Jesus walked this earth, He did not even have a place to lay His head. You would think that the Creator of the universe could come up with something down here on earth, you know, a little cabin or something, but He didn't even have a place to lay His head. Jesus had one place to go as He walked on this earth, and He, uh, and that was, uh, he was going to the cross. At Easter, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Christianity is the only religion in this world that is based on the resurrection of its founder. Uh, and, and so, uh, as, and when he arose from the dead by the power of God, he shook the foundations of hell itself because up until then, uh, hell had held captive those that were bound by it. Uh, but now, by the power of Almighty God, the prison doors of hell were shaken off their hinges and the power of darkness was forever broken by the power by the power of Almighty God, who is to be praised forevermore. Somebody say glory. glory. But in the first order to have the glory of God in the resurrection, Jesus had to face the humility of the cross of Calvary. First humility and then honor. We've got that backwards. We want honor. We want glory. Philippians. I'm going to go to Philippians 2. Philippians 2. Philippians 2. I'm going to read right here. Philippians 2. I'm going to start in verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill you my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being in, in uh, of one accord of the same mind. So uh, the Apostle Paul is telling uh, the Philippian church to be in the same like-mindedness. Let nothing be done through strife, or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, okay? Uh, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. There was a person that came to me one day and says, you know, I, uh, I can forgive others, but I just can't forgive myself. And I looked at him and said, what self is that? Because see, when we give up ourselves, we give it to the glory of God, don't we? We give our reputation up. God, Christ gave His reputation up and says, let this mind be in you, which was also... In Christ Jesus, verse 8, 
It says, And being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out, uh, work, work out what God has placed in you. As Jesus was going to the cross, what are his attitudes about himself, others, and God? He thinks of others, not himself. Philippians 2, 5, and 6. The mind of Christ means the attitude Christ exhibited. Your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. After all, outlook determines outcome. If the outlook is selfish, the actions will be divisive and destructive. James and John. Their attitudes were selfish, weren't they? They wanted thrones on each side of Jesus. James says the same thing. Uh, James uh, 4, 1 through 10. I'm going to go there. James 4, 1 through 10. It says, uh, from, from, from where comes wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even in your lusts that war in your members? You lust and have not, you kill and desire to have, you cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lusts. You adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is the enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Boy, that's pretty, pretty rough there, James, isn't it? Do you think that the Scripture saith in the vain, the Spirit that dwelleth in us lusts to envy? But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resist the proud, but he giveth grace to the humble. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning, and your, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Amen. Is he? And so uh, we as men tend to think of ourselves first and not think of others. This is what James and John did as they were asking Jesus if they, they could occupy the places of honor in the kingdom of God. It caused division and friction among the disciples as selfish ambition rises out of the heart and comes out of the mouth. As Jesus served others, he made himself of no reputation. In Christ's humiliation, according to verse 7 in, in uh, <coughs> Philippians chapter 2, <clears throat> he actually emptied himself and took upon the role of a servant. Here was the God of the universe. Here was the creator of the universe emptying himself and taking on the role of a servant. Sometimes we hear people refer uh, we, sometimes we hear people refer to others as those that are full of themselves. Our goal as Christians is not to be full of ourselves, but to be full of Jesus. Even though Jesus was the Lord of the universe, he stepped down from his position that he had in heaven and became the servant to all who will receive him. How important was Jesus in heaven before he came down to earth? He was, the very, he was very important because he came and died on the cross and rose again. God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. Is a, uh, and, and he was made in the likeness of men. He himself took part in the same flesh and blood, for it behooved him to be made like unto his brother in Hebrews 2, 14 through 17. The Son of Man uh, came not to be saved, but to serve and to give, Matthew 20, 28. He who is the express image of the invisible God takes upon him to be the likeness of sinful humanity. The Creator became the created. Wrap your mind around that if you can. The Creator became his creation. Hebrews 2, 14 through 17, we read, Christ shared man's <clears throat> moral nature that by, dying, um, that by dying man might be made free from death. For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. So there was a body created for Jesus, uh, for, for Christ, and he occupied the body. 
uh, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them through fear of death who were their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not upon him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Who didn't come down here as an angel. <laughs> he came down here as a man, the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful, the mercy of God, and a faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Now that's a lot to wrap your mind around, isn't it? But that's what Jesus did. That's what the creator of the universe did. He came and humbled himself. Matthew 20, 28 says, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Not only did Jesus come to die for the sins of man, he actually did it. He actually did it. He became obedient even to the death, death of the cross. From our natural standpoint, it is simply appalling to think of the eternal and beloved Son of God submitting to be nailed to a cross by, by those whom He lovingly sought to save. The utter unwor unworthiness and guilt of men could, ne could never make itself more hideous before the eyes of heaven. But yet the infinite grace of God is hereby revealed. He was given himself for a ransom. What is ransom? It's a, it's a payment that we pay to set somebody free, isn't it? For a ransom for us all. The just one was willing, uh, was willingly suffering for the unjust that he might bring us to God. Galatians 3.13 Are we willing to step down from where we are and be the servant to someone? Are we willing to suffer so that others might know God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? And you say, well, Pastor Kurt, I don't know if I want to go to the cross or not. I'm afraid maybe to step out in faith of that. You know, I just want to, I just want to live a nice life down here. You know, get caught up in the rapture, go to heaven. You know, all that good stuff that we hear about. What about in the meantime? Back in Mark 10, 36-38, Jesus asked His disciples a similar question. Mark, He said unto them, What would you that, that I should do for you? And they said to Him, Grant us that we should sit on one at the right hand, the other on the left hand in thy glory. But Jesus said to them, You know not what you ask. Can you drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? Are you on your own way or are you in the narrow way that leads to life everlasting and we can we each have to answer that question you know and and so many churches have been torn apart so many churches have been split because somebody wants to be in charge somebody wants to step up and rule over somebody else. And you know, that's not that's what, not what Jesus did. He came to lay his life down. And he says, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross every day, and follow me. It's a scary situation, isn't it? We might be afraid to put our faith in Jesus like that. The disciples were. So it's not uncommon to be afraid to put our faith in Jesus like that. But that's what Jesus said. That's what Jesus uh, says to us is, hey, I'm going to lay my life down. You lay your life down. See, I, I tell people salvation is free, but it will cost you your life. But you know, in, in place of your life, God gives us His life, doesn't He? He gives us new life. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things become new. And I, that's what I'm asking today. Uh, I'm asking the same question that Jesus asked his disciples. Are you willing to drink the cup? And are you willing to be baptized with? And the disciples said, yeah, we are. James? <coughs> was the first disciple to be martyred 
for the Lord, Acts chapter 12. Herod killed him with the sword. He was going to kill Peter too, but they prayed him out of prison. And, uh, and John, they tried to get rid of him a couple times too for preaching the gospel. He wasn't like these modern, they're not like these modern preachers that, that had private jets and millions and billions of dollars. They gave their life for the cause of Christ. See? And, uh, and John died on the Isle of Patmos, exiled. Now, uh, tradition said that they tried to uh, boil John in oil three times. They, were put, they put John down in a boiling pot of oil. And, it, and he came out and it didn't hurt him. He was protected by God. And, it, and it, he came out as having skin like a baby, it says. It was probably Johnson's baby oil they were doing. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, but, uh, anyway that would be scary, you know, to be going down into a boiling pot of oil. But, you know, John, the disciples, after the resurrection, and after they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they were determined to follow Jesus wherever He led. You know, we, we have an old invitational song, wherever He leads, I'll go. Wherever He leads, I'll go. And I wonder if we think that way anymore. Or do we think, do we have ambition like the disciples and say, you know, I just want, you know, me to have a good life here. I want, you know, be easy and smooth and, and go to heaven when I die, and, you know, things like that. And we have to get away from this Americanized Christianity and pick up the cross and follow Jesus. We have to get, we have to look at the Word of God and say, God, I'm afraid to follow you. But Lord, I want to do what you want me to do. You might be afraid to go knock on a door like with, with Sister Sharon and hand out a flyer, but you know, once you do it, God can bless you. He can bless that seed you planted. You know? And, uh, and so God is able to do more than we can even think or imagine. The Word of God says, but we have to be willing to pick up our cross and follow Him. And uh, I pray that I'm willing. I don't know if I am some days. Uh, I, I struggle with it just like everybody else does. I'm afraid sometimes, just like everybody else is. You know? But we have Jesus on our side. And He will lead us uh, to glory, won't He? He'll lead us to glory. Is there anyone that needs to make a public decision for God today? Public decision, accept Christ as their Savior. Public decision, follow the Lord in baptism. <coughs> public decision, uh, be members of this church. Whatever a public decision you, you make today. You know, uh, let, uh, let us know. Because I don't know. God has to lead you in those ways. God has to lead you. And you have to follow Wherever he leads, I'll go. That's what the old song says. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Mm -hmm. Anybody have a word to say before we dismiss? God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. You know? Maybe we uh, may be afraid the way he, where he's leading us. But we don't have to be afraid. Because, uh, you know, there's other... There's another sermon that uh, before uh, before Jesus sent his disciples somewhere, he went there first to prepare the way, didn't he? He, he goes there first. So it could be in the lives of our family. It could be in the lives of our neighbors next door. Wherever the Lord sends us, uh, go. And you can listen to the Holy Spirit and go the way of the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Just tarry just for a minute. Just want to make sure everybody's okay. And uh, everybody wants to follow the Lord.
uh, because I can't make the decision for you. You have to make it yourself. You know, John, James, and John had to make the decision yourself. Yeah, we can do that. And, um, and they did. They followed the Lord to death. So and let's go, to the Lord, in prayer one more time. Father, thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you for your cross. I, Lord, I pray, Father God, that Lord, we would take you would take away our fear. I pray that Lord, we don't. Uh, I pray, Father God, that Lord. Uh, we would pick up our cross daily and follow you, Lord God. I, 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 Lord, I pray you'd forgive me of my sins. I pray you'd forgive me of my doubts, Lord God. And Lord, I, I pray, Father God, that Lord, you'd give us boldness, Lord, to tell a, a soul about you, Lord God. And Lord, I just pray, Father God, that Lord, you would take this church and Lord, uh, use it for your glory. And Lord, uh, we'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you till we meet again.